Hello, this is the first interview of Bastian Kung Fu Channel. Here we are with Master Alton Chen of Tang Lang Kung Fu from Canada. Hello. Hello. Can you? you? Fine, and you? Can you yeah. start introducing yourself, your Kung Fu background? Yeah. Well, uh, as you have already uh, said, my name is Alton Chang. I practice uh, the Peng Mantis uh, style for like, I don't know, 20 plus years. My lineage, my master is uh, Hu Xilin, whose master is uh, Ma Han Qing from Beijing. And uh, Ma Han Qing learned uh, both um, Pen Bosom Tai Chi Mantis and the Six Harmony Mantis from uh, Chen Yun Tao. Chen Yun Tao is, was a, uh, a high ranking official in the uh, Chinese government back in the 50s, I believe. Um, but officially, his master would be uh, Shen Shangling. So there's a, a little bit of complication over there because of the political uh, um, environment back then. And uh, my master Hussein, he also learned um, Chinese wrestling from uh, Huan Fu, who is who is very famous, uh, a Chinese um, master, a Chinese wrestling teacher uh, back in the days. So our style is a bit of mixture of uh, uh, mantis and uh, wrestling. Okay, um, have you practiced other martial arts? No, I haven't. Okay, so can you explain to us the, the main difference between the Taiji Mei Hua and Liu He Tong Long? Taiji Mei Hua, well, the lineage of both branches, uh, they started by, by the same person, I believe. If you look at the, the lineage um, graph, um, but the, the system, the ideas are always the same is the expression of the ideas that's um, slightly different. Uh, take um, Pen Blossom Mantis, for example, it is more, it focuses on fast attack and fast strike, uh, whereas Six Harmony Mantis would be focusing on body control. So Six Harmony Mantis share a lot of similarities with Chinese wrestling. And while wrestling is uh, a part of the meta system, we don't see as much in the uh, Pen Blossom lineage. I see. So, um, what do you consider the um, the core concepts of both style? And in your opinion, uh, what makes uh, Mahan King family unique in this way about like combining the two? Mantis system and um, yeah. working it together in in a curriculum. Um, the mantis is different from many other martial arts. Is that we are more uh, encompassing. Uh, I think the audio cut a little bit. Okay. Oh, it, it come back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when we think about martial arts, many people just think about uh, like hitting the other person or doing something to the other person. But for us, it's not about the other person. Well, it's about the other person, but it's, it's a connection between you and the other person. And how do you control that interaction? Um, we talk about a little bit of difference between Pumbosa Mentors and Six Harmony Mentors. Even though their expression are, are slightly different, the concept of control is the same. Um, especially when you combine it with uh, wrestling. So you are using uh, finer movement, a lot of movement that cannot be seen uh, as a third party, as an observer that can only be known when you apply it to the person. At that moment, it's, it's always improvised. It's like jazz. So there's no um, planning. Well, there's planning involved. The planning involved, the strategizing is done when you are practicing, when you're training. You uh, learn the, uh, the patterns. But when you are actually 
applying uh, the skill that you know is always wait at the seconds. It's depending on that on that situation. And uh, what was the uh, second part of the question? Um, how like do you combine the three together in a fight? Yeah, so we talk about that a little bit like that, a, a little bit of that concept of, of, of control, of uh, improvisation. Um, how do you combine that? It's not, it's not an active process. You have to um, train in an all-compensating way. Like you have to keep using all the skills together in a scenario, in that situation. In a in a free flow format that you can mix anything together. Um, it there's no like if you for example if you take take uh, wrestling apart and you just learn wrestling and then you take uh, punching kicking apart and you just learn like say boxing or, or uh, any like like taekwondo with this uh, kicking um, focus. If you just learn the three things separately. And you apply them separately. There's no way you can combine them in a fight. You have to use them together um, based on the uh, whatever your opponent is going to give you, and then you you throw in that scenario, you throw in that situation, then eventually you will be able to combine them. And um, Master uh, Mahankin um, used to teach both styles, Taiji, tai Meihua, and Liu He. Um, what's your opinion like about how it can be teaching both together and plus wrestling as your uh, Sifu did? Yeah. What, what do you think are the um, challenges about teaching uh, more than one style, even if they are uh, like close styles together? Well, at my generation, when it comes to me, I don't think there are two different styles. I think Six Harmony is a step up from uh, Taiji Meihua, the Pan Bosom, in terms of body control. However, when you actually apply the skills, even though you might want to apply Six Harmonies, for example, a lot of the time we will turn it back to um, Pan Bosom. So, Going back to the um, combination of the um, styles we talked about before, we don't separate them together. We don't we don't think they are two distinct things. We we think they are they are the same thing. You just express it differently according to different situations. Sometimes when the situation calls for more fast striking, for example, I my students he is very stiff. When I try to wrestle him, he his lateral stiffness will will try will um prevent me from doing a lot of uh, wrestling takedown and sometimes um six harmonies uh technique but because he is stiff he is when he try to when his body is resisting that kind of pressure that will also open up the opportunity for me to do plant bottom strikes so if I if the uh, six harmonies or wrestling it doesn't work, then you always you can always switch back to pump bosom strikes, and vice versa. If the person is very fast because you are going very fast, if he's faster, uh, very fast in reaction and he blocks all your fast strikes, then you can just uh, infiltrate his body, infiltrate his uh, his uh, mental idea, and then you can do some you can do more wrestling and you can do more uh, six harmonies. So it's not. Two distinct style. It's not. We don't think of it as two. Maybe in the in in the older days, people think of it as two dis, uh, distinct branches. Especially when you put in uh, wrestling together, because wrestling we require a lot of uh, softer movement and body control. We just we just think of, think of them as the same thing, but different expressed differently. Uh, that's very inter interesting. So it's like considering that uh, in my family, in your branch. You treat you teach the three contents like one thing uh, together in the curriculum. You don't see like different boxes, but a whole of the content, isn't it? That's correct. Yes. Oh, that's very interesting. And um, 
what do you consider different uh, about training and teaching from uh, uh, the time you started training and yeah. now what um, what do you teach different what do you practice different mm, it's not that much difference but it's more skilled i would put it that way right now when i teach i have the chance to go back to uh, foundation and basics so when i um when i teach my students i will also do the basic together with them and it will always give me like the better knowledge you have it will always give you a, a different insight even though the basic training is still the same thing so you can explain it the better you know and you will understand why you are doing it better and you can apply that uh it's still the knowledge to your more complicated uh, uh, technique. And also you can also apply your com more complicated knowledge or technique into a simpler thing. For example, Tan Tui uh, is, is considered um, foundation in many, many Chinese martial arts. And we can apply the same mentors concept into the Tan Tui. Um, although it is more, it is not as, mentors as we would like to think but the the building blocks are always there so when you when you learn when you start to teach when you start to train it's not one chunk and then un, another chunk it's not it's not linear uh, linear progress it's more like um, a mixture of everything in a more chaotic way uh it goes back and forth so it's no it's not like you are highly skill right now you can forget about the basic it's not like that it's it's the basic the basics are still your your foundation for it's called foundation for for a good reason and uh you will still applying the same foundation to your uh uh, uh better technique and, and vice versa i i use to compare uh compare like sometimes us westerns we have a, a linear progression of Uh, thinking about learning when like yeah. Chinese culture like Taoism, acupuncture they have like not this this way but the knowledge like this way so you, you go more like deeper and not linear in, in yes, this kind of it sense is, it, it always go back it always goes back and forth and when you progress you also You want to think about whether you learned something in the uh, in the past, whether you learned it correct or you understand it correctly. So, the concept may may or may not be changing, but the way you apply it, the way you understand it, could could be different. Or, you could also change the concept a little bit. You can say, "Hey, my master, when he taught this, maybe he didn't understand it uh, as much as I do right now. Maybe I can change it a little bit. Maybe I can improve it." That's called research. Uh, it happens a lot in the in the scientific uh, area, but uh, so far I know uh, it is not very the concept of scientific research or um, or critical thinking in a sense is not very well known in the martial art realm. I see that that, that would be my ne next question, like. Uh, what's your opinion about uh, changing sets, techniques, and uh, methodologies of training and teaching? Uh, that's a quite a, a hot and well. People discuss a lot about this in Chinese martial arts. Right. You you have to change. You if your arts is has any relevance in the modern day life in your town, you have to change it. There's no way go, going uh, going around this. Um, however, that that said, doesn't mean you just change it uh, really, really. Doesn't mean you just change it to in order to accept more students to um, to gain more money. You change it based on your knowledge, based on critical thinking, based on uh, real research, based on your understanding about your body or human's body. Uh, and how how people fight, what's the pattern, so on and so forth. This today, I would say that 
um, the general population is more uh, is is better educated than the uh, the previous generations. My master, for example, he didn't finish uh, university because China back then uh, had a lot of uh, socio political issue. It, the environment didn't allow them to gain that kind of insight. So in this generation, because we are generally speaking, we are uh, better educated. So we need to apply our education into this area, into uh, to make the study of martial art more scientific. And it it has to follow the principle of, of physics. You have to apply physics um, into your training. You cannot just go by your old saying, your master saying, and and say and think that that is there's truth. This that is the right way. That, that that will always be the right way. Uh, it will prevent growth. It will prevent like growth as a whole as a, as Chinese martial. Art, it will also prevent personal growth. So I I see a lot of people are still talking about the like tra the traditional way. There are some good thing in the traditional way. So like Mabu, for example, uh, foundation. And we see this uh, people in the fitness uh, realm are, are discovering the Mabu and it's a good thing. And it's a very good exercise. But the thing is the difference between just sticking it to the traditional way and understanding and having the modern way is that the modern way we should understand the benefit of Mabu, the science of Mabu, and the biomechanics of Mabu in terms of modern science. Why it is so good? Um, why we should do this? How it is? How it can be applied to your skills? And not just because people in the past hundred years have been doing this, so we just stick to it. So traditional way can be helpful, but you have to understand why. That's how you improve. That's how you improve the traditional way. Um. As you are a physical educator too, uh, same as me. Um, how how do how do you consider like kung fu helped uh, this another um, profession you have, and the opposite? How uh, studying physical education uh, change your classes and the, the 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 two ways, you know? Right, right. So right now we, um, you know, physics, uh, I mean, fitness is a big industry and uh, fitness science is also uh, gaining, tra gaining traction and a lot of um, uh, physical education is, is um, our, our way of doing physical education right now is being led by a, fit, um, a sports science right now. And there are a lot of new research coming in. So, Kung Fu is not that very different from that aspect of, of fitness. It's also very different because we do, we focus on performance of our body. We don't uh, necessarily focus on gaining the maximum muscle that we can. And which is, I don't know, I don't understand why people want to do that, but <laughs> there's another, other questions and another topic for another day. But, uh, we can, you, you have to apply the same principle of science into making your performance better. And when you, when you think about it this way, it goes back to your physical training. Like, what am I doing? Why am I training uh, myself in such a way? What, what aspect you want to, what attribute you want to gain from it? If you just want to gain maximum amount of muscle, then it will impede your performance. So you don't want to do that. And for example, right, um, police, you still see a lot of police today training for hypertrophy, gaining uh, muscle mass, uh, big muscle mass. You have to ask, if you think about from a, from a, from a performance perspective, you, you ask why, why your job doesn't need it. If you do it, if you train yourself this, this way, you will have a uh, harder time performing your job. So why are you still doing this? <laughs> So we really do have this kind of um, dialogue and discussion with um, people who are whose job, whose livelihood require um, good physical fitness. 
but right now they still tend to be focusing on less on performance but more on pure physical attribute and i think um it's not just not martial art but the thinking of martial art the performance can help in such a way um in this sense um how do you think uh, strength and flexibility should be trained in martial arts like a specific training for for getting more uh, quality of the movement uh, you need to have, yeah you need to have both you need to be flexible um stretching is always good one good way one uh, good physical training routine uh, that is complementary to martial art is gymnastics and uh, traditionally we don't think of think of it that way but there are a lot of like uh, overlaps between gymnastic and martial arts for example they are both uh, performance based when when you train in gymnastic you are not just training strength pure strength you are training strength in a way that you can perform strength is meaningless if you cannot control it if you do not have the range of motion to to use strength, for example, you you can kick very hard, but if it doesn't allow you to kick higher or further, one you cannot use it. And if you try to just force it to kick harder and further without the range of motion, you are going to hurt yourself. And and think about applying the skills, applying the the technique in a uh, real scenario. Police, for example, they. Many police are still training, focusing training, not, 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 not in strength, but hypertrophy. So their strength is already not maximized. But even if you, if you maximize in strength without the flexibility, without the control, what will happen is that if you apply your strength to uh, a scenario, say you have to arrest a person, then you will be using brute force. That means you are open, opening the pathway or you are building the pathway for police brutality, even though you might not want to do it. So, so it's not the idea is not just strength or flexibility or any individual physical attribute. It's control, like we talked about before. It's always about the control, control of your body, controlling your opponent. It's more important than just having one attribute. So in the in this way, if you would give like any uh, tips in terms of period, periodization of the training for uh, kung fu practitioners, what would you say? For example, practice first um, uh, resistance, um, uh, strength. Uh, practice more flexibility first, aerobic. Yeah. Uh, flexibility comes first without, without flexibility or the range of motion then your strength you, you just simply cannot use strength once you have the flexibility then you can add on uh, power uh, you can add on strength strength is very helpful it helps you build up allow you to build up more power allow you to perform better especially if you are like training to use weapons so strength is helpful but you have you need to have that range of motion first and you need to have that control and the understanding of control so if you think about like a typical dream goer in a typical workout session they don't do a lot of flexibility they don't do a lot of agility they just go to the gym lift up some weight and go 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 if you do this like for five years ten years your flexibility, your control will not go, but your strength, sure, it will go, it will continue to go, but there's no way you can apply in a safe manner. What martial art is all about is applying your skills to make yourself safe, whether it be it in self-defense scenario or when you are, uh, for, no, for some reason, you're attacking people, like police, when you go arrest a person, is an attack, that's, that is an offensive uh, operation. But that is going to make the whole society safer if you are doing it the right way. So if you do that and you have control, then everybody can be a lot safer. 
But if you do not do that, if you do not have, if you, if you use brute force, if you just have the strength, then problems will occur. The operation itself isn't safe. And because the operation is connected to larger issue, then the society isn't safe. Uh, very good. So think about not only physical training that we discussed it a little bit now, but more in, in a general way about techniques and even the um, cultural, Chinese cultural aspects. Um, as you have a, a traditional formation in, in Kung Fu, but also as a physical educator, what do you consider that lacks uh, in many Kwons, many Kung Fu gyms nowadays? Uh, the big one is sparring. Uh, in our school, we spar a lot. We, we, spar, we want to spar every day if, if it allows. Like COVID, it's a little bit harder, but uh, we want to spar. And you have to spar in order to learn Kung Fu, in order to learn control. If you do not spar, you cannot learn it, but you have to do it in a, a, a very uh, controlled manner. Uh, if you do not spar, no matter how long you practice, no matter how good your performance in a form would be, you won't be able to understand what you're doing. You have to test yourself in a in a way in a way situation. So sparring not only is a is a lab test, it's also a field test of your skill. So since many of the uh, Chinese Kung Fu uh, schools or benches are not doing sparring, they are actually losing knowledge. What they can do is just say, my teacher said this and this, and we, that's why we do this and that. But you didn't test it. You don't know whether that is correct or not. If you test it, then you can form your own opinion about whether that saying or that idea, that concept, that expression, you can say whether that is right or not, then you can improve. Without testing it, you don't, you won't even stay there. You won't even, the level, the, the standard of practice won't even stay here. It will always go down. Because you are always thinking your teacher is better. His teacher, he's thinking his teacher is better. Then his teacher is thinking his teacher is better. So it, <laughs> it goes down, right? Yes. Science is about testing. Yes, I, it, yeah, I in a scientific manner. I totally agree with you. I think one of the problems that I would add in this with this answer maybe uh, school schools nowadays, not only in Brazil, but I think all over the world, are testing knowledge about how many sets you know, not uh, about uh, how many te techniques you can really apply, right? Right. Um, well, let's take that for, uh, let's talk about a concrete example about this. Karate. Karate, this, this form, they also, the, the curriculum have how many number of techniques that they can train, they will train for how many bells, I don't know. So forms, we do forms too, but we have to, we need to understand form is your individual practice when you cannot spar, when you don't have a partner when you want to focus more on on uh, perform on on uh, increase improving the performance of your body in a certain manner it's like a dance but it it is helpful in that sense but without breaking it down into a real sparring scenario in a FIFO sparring scenario form is meaningless the same issue with how many numbers of technique that you have on the on the book on a on a on an index and you try to teach to that you can apply one technique on a willing uh, partners but you can never he can never give you the real um, reaction if you just try to apply it that way sure when you first learn it you want to up, you want to see like in the ideal world how this will go down Eventually, you have to move past that. You have to, you have to have your partner, not to be a ruling partner, but a partner who will provide, who will, who will hit back, who will, 
who will resist you and then you will have to try to um see if this technique doesn't work how do you how do you follow up with that technique it goes back to earlier uh uh to the dis discussion earlier about how we combine everything together this is the this is the process we combine we can combine everything together because our partners is not going to uh feed us or give us what we want they will react everybody reacts differently and you want you want you want that you don't want to have one uh, reaction and you keep doing it and over and over again. That's, that's why you want to have many different sparring partners too. And because people will react differently, you will have to find different ways to overcome that reaction and to apply your technique, your, apply your skills in whatever way you can. The goal isn't to use a certain technique to, to hit a person or to take down a person. The goal is to control the fight and win the fight. So uh, I understand many uh, Japanese-based uh, martial arts, they have this system. Uh, they go test for a bell and the test involves a certain amount of like technique you have to perform or a certain amount of, of set or forms you have to perform. We, we don't have bells, like Chinese martial arts, we don't have bells. We, don't, we also don't test our student that way because it's it's pointless it's a waste of time if you want to test your students the only the, the only way to test it is to give the student whatever resistance you can throw at them don't give them uh, opportunity opportunity to hit you and see how they react to you and there's no there's no way to put a mark on that and say you pass or not what you can tell is if this person is improving, is his reaction faster? Is his uh, uh, changing of the mentality changing according to your change better? Is he following you? Then you can tell he's improving and that's it. That's what we want, improvement, not a grade. Yeah, um, in my point of view, we should think about sets, not only applications itself, like the guy does one, two, three, but thinking about like uh, some people call it shenfala, uh, like the way the body is moving. So if one right. one set teach you moves more like that way, using more the the center or the tension or the body corporeity. So the, this, I think, should progress about levels, not like isolated techniques, because this is, is stays a little bit like karate, like the bunkai. It's it's really difficult to apply. So if you know how to move, you will use this way of moving in all the techniques. So right. if the guy does a little bit different, you are ready for it because you yeah. you you, are, you know the way you move. Yes, the, the purpose of, well, a form has a lot of purpose. They, not only they teach you uh, certain techniques, not only they teach you like how your body is supposed to move, uh, how techniques can be trained together. And a lot of the time, the purpose isn't teaching you how to fight. A lot of the time, the purpose is just to train your body, to open up your body. Many of the moves cannot be applied cannot be applied in a real fight if the purpose of the moves is just to open your body. And you have to, you as a practitioner have to understand that. You have to understand you can never apply a form as it. You can only apply a form um, once you come upon a um, sparring partner who is not going to, to feed you what you want. Then you are, you will apply. You can learn to apply in the real sense. You do. You talk about like what the one two three this this and that. You can do that when you are an absolute beginner, not even intermediate. Absolute beginner, you can do that. But once you once you get better, once you advance, then you need to throw resistance at it. It's like resistance training. When you first pick up a weight, you can do it very light, one two three, very slowly, but. Gradually improving, then your resistance will have to be uh, strong. You have to, you have to face gravity. You have to face 
um, friction, you have to face obstacle in your, in your path. And the idea is to change yourself, to often overcome the obstacles, not to, not to keep using the same technique, banging against a wall. It will never work. It is for, not only it will never work, sometimes it can work if you use brute force. But again, we talk about the issue of brute force, it isn't safe and it isn't efficient. And it's not, it's not, if you use brute force, it isn't about your skills. It's just your force, that's it. Right? If it, anyone can, can train brute force, that's why they join the police. Um, so a better way of training would be at the beginning level, you, you can break it down one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And uh, your partner will react in, uh, in the idea with the fiction in science, as we say, with the fiction. So, so you can perform the move. move, but you have to move past that. Eventually your partner will not give you what you want and you Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was the, the, uh, freezing for a while. Yeah, the connection got a little bit weird. Yeah. Um. So, what um do you think uh people look for when they looking for um nowadays? What should we we use as a Kung Fu advertisement, like self-defense, uh, physical training, values. What do you consider it's more uh, that's, good that's nowadays? That's a hard one. That's a hard, <laughs> that's a hard question to answer because if your livelihood is relied upon teaching, that you want as many students as you can, then that means you have to appeal to the wider uh, population and you have to use a lot of marketing tricks and you have to give them um, something very easy, something that they think they can pick up really fast. Usually this type of stuff will attract more people and you, you can earn uh, more money that way. But for me, I'm more of an academic, so I don't like to do it this way. And for us, like for, for my schools, because it's uh, more, uh, all encompassing. So it also means it is more difficult to train. If I distill the whole system to just kicking, then I can train a very good kicker in like maybe half a year or so a year. But if you want to train a very good, uh, all round fighter, wrestling, punching and, and involving like the idea of control, you need to have at least five years, spend five years in order to just not get very good, but just get like, get by four to five years. The real advancement come before, after the five years mark, six years, 10 years. The five years is just building up the foundation, building up the uh, um, prerequisite for your further development. And this is harder um, for people to follow in modern time is because our capitalistic culture isn't very, uh, it's very fast food based, it's McDonald's. Um, and people, because of that culture, people want something really, really, really fast. And they don't think about going deeper, going further. Um, like a lot of people, even with the bell system, like Taekwondo Karate, they think um, getting a bad bell, oh, that's, that's good enough. That's, I'm done with it. When, when, when in reality, bad bell is nothing. You just, like as if, how, how, how long is uh, four years in, in bad bell? I mean, how long does it take to get a bad bell in karate? I think it's like four years, three or four years, something like that. It, it's, it's nothing in the realm of martial arts. Even it's nothing in the realm of like uh, modern education. Four years time, you get a bachelor, but bachelor is nothing. You need like 
to get a PhD, to get a PhD, to get a to get really really deep, to get really really good in the field. I think the audio cut a little bit. No? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, now it's good. Yeah, now, now it's good. Now it's good. Um, so, uh, in this way, uh, how, how do you think we should keep the things traditional, but at the same time adapted, uh, uh, modernization of approach of fighting, and still uh, think, uh, let people interested in it? It's it's a really hard one. Like I said, we have to move forward. We, we have to move along with time. But we should keep the good stuff. We shouldn't just um, appeal to the lowest common denominator. Then th there's no more, no more arts. Like everybody can be a police in, in six months. There's like, there's nothing. Um, one of the most ideal way is for any government to treat this as an uh, academic discipline. I think China, in a way, is doing this, but in a very uh, roundabout way because they focus more on wushu, which means taolu, uh, which is like to be honest, garbage. Uh, treat this as a discipline, academic discipline, and get really good people to teach it who are the people who think of themselves as academic. Um, there are too many salesmen in this, uh, in this um, I don't want to say industry, because if I say industry, it implies business. Um, in this discipline, many people are trying to turn it into a, an industry and therefore business. Um, that said, we also need to think about the business uh, approach um, we should educate uh, the public better. We should educate people. Uh, we should educate the public what real martial art is. People get their idea from movies, from um, popular concepts, from wushu, from whatever they can get, and and that's all wrong. And and uh, that would be a tremendous task. It's very hard to. Uh, do how to how to change people's mind but um if the movie industry would portray martial art in a more realistic sense yeah i'm all for it um one another good way to uh, move along with time is to think about how are we going to teach uh people who will have to use martial art in their life in their work for example the police soldiers um, how to make their combat system more effective. If you look at, like, I look at Canadian police and I look at their curriculum, I'm not impressed. Um, I think there's a lot can be do. A lot can be, like, there's a lot of room for improvement. It doesn't have to be Chinese martial arts, but much generally speaking martial arts to make them uh, understand performance, body control, and and controlling the fight instead of just using brute force to, to overwhelm the other person. Um, if we have the opportunity to, to do this, then yes, we can improve our school, like the lineage of our school, and we can move martial arts along with time. One of the worst way to do this is to make martial arts a sport, like karate, because well, in karate, there are, uh, I think there are three types of karate. One is the sport karate, the, uh, with the karate association. One is the really, really traditional school. And um, fewer and far between, proper, proper martial art, proper traditional martial art school. Like who, who will, that is going to focus on um, proper fighting. Is the internet facing again? Yeah, a little, a little bit, but I can, still can hear you. Okay, that's good. So, um, yeah, let, let me continue the thought. So, the way the, like, like we see in the Olympics, karate in the Olympics is a joke. 
Like everybody knows it. Even the car, everyone they know it. Uh, so we don't want it. We don't. We definitely don't want that. <laughs> the, so traditional, the traditional, guy, traditional, traditional, yeah. The guy went Go like is, is sleepy and got the medal. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, he bumped. He walked into a kick, and he won the fight. How ridiculous that is! Yeah. So yeah, that way we we don't want that. Um, I find the same uh, idea. Um, Japan, they also have kendo and kenjutsu. So kendo is a sport. So set kendo as a sport is uh, akin to like karate in Olympics. Uh, it's very limiting. It's rule based. The rule doesn't make any 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 sense at all. Uh, it limits the teaching. It limits uh, the way you can express your body. We definitely don't want that, and we don't want to have a bell system because that's like I said, it's pointless waste of time. We don't want to be entirely traditional either. At least for me, I know some school might want that. They they think that is the proper way to go, but you are still limiting yourself to a box. You are not opening yourself up to new ideas. So the even fewer do to do that is to treat your martial art as a proper martial arts. That means you keep your lineage, you keep your tradition, but you also eliminate some tradition. You also eliminate some uh, concepts or, or practice that doesn't make any sense. You evolve your arts. You make it. You modernize it in the sense that it is. Um, it is it is in good quality. It is in good faith, not just trying to gain more money, but to to progress your art to make it better. That way, if more if enough people are doing this, and people start seeing this, this is the martial art that that is truly the martial art that we want, the kung fu that we want. Then I think more people will will start to appreciate more the true value of it. Right now, when people say, "Oh, they, I want to let go," for they are just scratching the surface. They don't understand the the depth, the the the, the history, the culture, the uh, the mental requirement that is needed in order to get deep into the art. Um, they understand. They they think of it as just fighting. If you just think of it as as fighting, anybody can fight in a in a in one way or the other. It's It's no art. There's no art in that. Martial art isn't just、um, fighting, just hurting other people. It's also about, like I said, it's about self-control, controlling yourself, controlling the fight, controlling your opponent. It builds character. It builds culture. It makes you a proper、uh, person, a proper well-educated person in this matter. So this this is what we want to do. This is what we are aiming for when we are looking for students. Yeah, and I、uh, I think about the the connections we do. I I have like friends all over the world because of kung fu. Like if I wasn't practicing that that time, probably I I wouldn't have met them. And about this topic, I I think in Brazil, we, in traditional schools, we have two. Main scenarios that, for example, one is the school that、uh, re- only teaches the traditional kung fu, but it's a little bit like Hong Kong movie industry. You know, they、yeah. they they try to do like the ceremonies or even oh, I will only teach this technique. It's a secret that few people know. This、right. way, yeah, or- that is the tra- that is the traditional. Martial art. I want to get rid of. Yeah, continue. Oh, or the, the opposite side that I think it's like weird that they practice traditional kung fu, but when they fight, they fight using sanda. So I think,、right. oh, you practice one martial art, but when you fight, you use another one. What What's the sense? I usually ask. So what's your、yeah. opinion about this? Like the the mod the modernization of the fight. And but when the, the people of traditional kung fu they are fighting, they don't use the traditional techniques, but they use、right, sandai instead.、Right. <laughs> I think I think your your two sides are your two things are two sides of the same coin. Let's talk about traditional traditional school first. 
what they have is a lot of a lot of set a lot of forms that is being taught like for 50 years plus and they have a lot of um, traditions conventions rituals rituals that's the word um that is that aren't really relevant to to the arts if you if you distill it you don't really need the rituals in order to teach the arts the rituals is just so so conventions to to bind the people together which is good if 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 they serve their purpose but you don't come into a martial arts school just to just to experience the rituals you want to learn proper martial art you want to learn self-defense you want to get your body uh, performing in the way that you want so i would say like i said you eliminate the rituals that aren't necessary that is too cumbersome like um like kowtow with your sifu i mean in chinese culture uh, i think some people are still doing this today sure if if people want to do it but for me teaching in canada teaching in other countries it would be very hard very difficult for me to ask a white guy to count out to me it could happen if if, if we, if we uh, uh, know, know each other long enough but that's no uh <laughs> i mean it's not necessary you see you can get rid of that part you can you can you can still maintain that kind of relationship, that uh, per deep personal relationship without going to that process. Like just a bow is enough, like get together, have a drink, you know, be friendly to them. That's fine. Okay. And the, the mid of the, of the class should still be sparring with your, with the way that you know, with, with, the, with the techniques that you practice. And it comes back to the way to, to the reason why people uh, do want to do the techniques, they do the form, but they practice with sanda. The reason they do it is because they do not know how to use their techniques. They do not use they not they do not know how to use their their sets, their forms. So the only way they can they can spar is with sanda. Is sanda is more like a uh, I don't know kickboxing in a way. Um, they do, they do not apply the uh, techniques in a real, real fight. Real fight means the fight is, there's no rule governing the fight. It's dead or alive. It's, it's win or lose. Sanda has rules. There are some things you cannot use. There are some uh, uh, area you cannot attack. Uh, but traditional martial arts, uh, all traditional martial arts, doesn't matter whether it's Chinese or, or uh, European. We're developed in a world where there's no rules governing the fight. And a lot of techniques, a lot of concept behind the techniques came from that background. So you have to apply your technique into a, spar, a sparring scenario without a referee or the rules stopping you. So you have to do that. And you have to do that safely. So this is how you practice. This is how you regain your knowledge. Like I said earlier, people uh, Chinese martial arts schools, they are people are starting to lose their knowledge. It's because they don't spy in this way. Many many traditional martial arts are losing their knowledge, except Chinese wrestling, because in order to wrestle, you have to spy. <laughs> There's no way around it, right? So except Chinese wrestling um many of the schools are losing knowledge they don't they do not fight they do not how to fight anymore so take a page from chinese wrestling start sparring start sparring safely and and don't use force don't don't try to use when people think about sparring and and fighting they 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 use a lot of effort because this this is how they imagine a fight goes down don't do that in a spar don't do that uh to your partners Try to apply your technique slowly, softly. Learn how learn body control first. Once you learn body control, you can spar safely. Yes, I I that would be my next question. When do you teach? Do you have any methodology of sparring progression? And allied with this, um, what's yeah. your opinion about using um, fighting in Chinese kung fu with gloves? 
because I say uh, many people uh, say to me, oh, it gets very limited. Kung Fu doesn't use gloves. In my point, okay. in my point, um, one can adapt with gloves. Like, for example, if if you can't adapt to yourself to fight using gloves, how we will survive uh, in a real fight that you have to do many more adaptations. For example, if the guy has a small stick or if there are two guys fighting, for example, what's your opinion okay. about it? What was the first question? The um, progression of the sparring when you teach. Okay, let's, let's talk about this and then, and then the gloves. You remind me about the gloves. So sparring, um, when you first start to learn how to spar, um, I fall sparring uh, immediately in my student, even though they, they, they know nothing. And we, we start this by doing grappling. Because with grappling, even though it, it can hurt, you can, you can start to understand body control. You can, you can read your opponent's pressure or, or the level of his pain of his uh, discomfort or pain, and then you stop. You want to learn that. Once you learn that, you, once you have the uh, knowledge, you can start to apply this in a more uh, freestyle spiral. So grappling first, wrestling first, because we get very close. So you, with, especially with, with, with uh, grappling and wrestling, your body is touching. So you start to read your opponent. And, and their reaction. And you will automatically, because the, the situation is forced upon you, you have to you have to understand where they're resisting and how to overcome or go around that resistance. Um, so, and by grappling, yes, we, you see when you look at YouTube and you'll find like self-defense uh, demonstration, it's always demonstration. Um, People like, uh, like people let like the master let the student grab it, grab the wrist, and then you do something. You always start like this, but that's and that's for beginners. That's for practice. That's not how it will go down in a real fight. And you have to let your student understand that this is practice. This is real. The one of the issue I see in this. Uh, in a lot of demo, in a lot of like martial art discussion or or videos, is that they see something cool, but people immediately assume that it's real, and they do not understand this is this can be applied only in the practice or in the de demonstration. Um, if you keep if people keep talking like this, eventually the masters, the masters meaning current students eventually they will become masters, they will start to think that way. And, and again, knowledge will be lost and they cannot continue to learn how to spark because they got the wrong idea right away. So start, start very slowly, start as a demonstration, start as a practice, then do it very slowly, you open this up. You start with uh, uh, kicking or punching, but like just tapping your opponent uh you understand you want to understand when to when to stop so you don't hurt each other if now here's the thing many people think sparring should be like full contact and there's some uh, full contact is good there should be it, it should be good uh it, it is good to have full contact sparring but the idea isn't to learn how to fight in a full contact scenario full contact is about training your mind so you are not fear with pain with, with, with people fighting back. If you want to fight full contact, the best way to train is, uh, like I said, a tap or something like this, because once you have, once you have self-control, you can apply, you can let your control go here or here. It's easier that way than fighting in full contact. Once, if you just jump way ahead with full contact, again, people will use brute force. Because for that, you just go, 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 go like this. You want to hurt other and not prevent yourself from getting hurt. You want to have self-control first. And then full contact. And full contact is good only to overcome your, your inherent 
fear about fighting, about getting hurt. This is the progression in a very uh, rough manner, in a very uh, uh, broad sense. <clears throat> That's very good. Very good. Yeah. So let's go back to the gloves. <laughs> Full contact sparring, if you, if you are going to with full contact sparring, you need to have gloves, you need to have pads, you need to have helmets. Otherwise, you are going to hurt yourself and your, and your, and your partner. You don't want that. Ed. And gloves, I would argue, are only good for this, uh, for this reason. It's not that you, you will fight better if you use gloves. Gloves are there to protect you and your your spot, your partner. That's it. That is not to say it, gloves aren't good. Gloves can be good if you use in the right way, if you use the right gloves. What you don't want is assuming you are, when you're fighting with gloves, then that means that that's real fight. It's not. Once again, real fight has no rule. Real fight is not about it's not even about protecting your partner. Real fight is whatever goes down, goes down. Okay. And with that in mind, you want to have less, you want to have, have less objects that would impede your movement. And gloves will do that. If I wear gloves on my hand, this part, my, my skin here has less sense. When I, when I, when my hand is in contact with my opponents, I will sense less. I will have less feedback. A real fight, in a real fight, you want to have maximum sense as, as much as possible. That's your intel. That's your skill. Okay? Without that perfect, without that sense, you will not, you will misread your opponent. You will, your control will be, will be less precise and you will react slower. So in a real, so, so to train for real fight, no gloves. But with full contact, gloves, you have to combine these two ideas together on your own. Because we can never replicate a real fight. If you try to replicate a real fight, somebody is going to die. You have to have that in, in your mind. No matter how close to a real fight you get, it is still not real. And we are, we are trained, we don't want to kill your partner, right? This is, this, these are your friends, <laughs> right? Uh, I, I, I see people like they don't understand this. Um, like I've, I've seen videos, people use a real saw, sharp, sharp saw, try to spar really, really fast, really, really hard. And they got like a bank cut afterwards. Of course, it will happen. And, and you are lucky you didn't die. You don't want that. You don't want the police coming to your door. Um, yeah. So understand how to spar safely and when to apply the white equipment is tantamount in your training. It is very, it would be very difficult for me to, to say what is the white, white time to use the white equipment in a, in a format like this in a, in a couple of sentences. You have to learn it. So, thinking about uh, in this line, uh, what's your opinion about uh, kung fu in mo in modern sports like MMA, UFC? And do you think we have space? Do you think we should uh, try prepare athletes to this kind of competitions, or we should avoid? Okay. But what's your opinion? Yeah, that's. That's another big topic. Like, like I said before, we, we don't want to, we don't want to make it a sport. But when, if you go into MMA or that kind of thing, it's, it's spectator sport. There's still rules, for example. Um, there are still like limits and it's not real fight. When you train for proper martial art, you want to train for real fight. Uh, the military scenario, police scenario, that would be closer to the real fight than MMA. So that's one thing. And if you want to go into MMA, I don't deter people going into it. If you want it, hey, if that's your thing, sure. But you have to understand that because they are 
there are there are shared concepts, there are similarities and overlaps. But ultimately, like I said, there are two different things. And that means you have to train differently. You're either trained for a real fight, you're either trained for sports. It's like training for kendo and training for kendo, two things. Training for Olympic fencing and for like HEMA, two different things. If you want to train for sport, you have to train, for, train in a manner that will let you perform uh, the best in this sport scenario. So if you just simply try to trans, transplant, not translate or transfer, transplant your, your uh, Kung Fu knowledge into a sport scenario, it will not work. Even like take karate, karate for example, we have the sport karate, we have the like martial karate, they're very different. You cannot just translate your martial karate into your sport karate. You, it will not let you perform well. Take for example, in martial arts, we want to avoid getting killed. We want to avoid getting hit. And that's why we, we prioritize protection before attacking. And in, uh, in uh, soul fighting, can you do or, or any type of soul fighting, even in humor, we talk about like, they talk about a double hit. You hit the person and the other person hit you, that means nothing. You're, you're dead, you're still dead. You, you earn nothing from that, from that round. Because that's not what you want. That's not your goal in a, in a real fight. In a real fight, actually, to be very honest, you don't want to get into a real fight. Because even if you win, you earn nothing. There's no money in it. <laughs> There's only jail time. Uh, but you want to train for it to protect yourself and maybe uh, other people, but that's another issue. So like, that's why in, uh, in proper martial art, we always prioritize protecting yourself first. But sports is different. Whether it be MMA or, 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 or karate or taekwondo. Now, there are different formats of sports, like taekwondo, karate, fencing, they are scored, uh, they are based on pawns. So right now, as it stands, if you like, like the best example is the uh, Karate Olympics. The guy walked into, the guy didn't protect himself and walked into a kick and he got, he, he won that, he won that match <laughs> because of that. I mean, even though we, 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 from the martial art perspective, we think this is absolutely ridiculous, but it kind of makes sense in the sports scenario, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> not really. Because, like I said, sports scenario, there are a lot of rules, a lot of like, thing governing that, that, that match. And in sports scenario, if you can win, if you can win by walking into a kick and get concussion as a result, the sport martial art will say, why not? They will, say, they will prioritize that, actually. Why not? Like fencing. Um, fencing rules is like, if you attack, if you can score, touch the person with your stick, like a split second, not even a split second, but like one, one tenth of a second before, before that, you will score a pawn. So you will like lack your personal safety in order to, to, to poke the other guy. And sport will say, hey, if that, your coach will say, if, if you can score a pawn, if you can win the match in this manner, why not go for it, right? So, so this is sport you will train for it differently. You will train for a different purpose. You will train for a different goal. Even, so even, more, di yeah. even diff different uh, physical training uh, are, yes. should be really di uh, different physical preparation. It will be because going into contact scenario, because a lot of techniques, a lot of tricks and cannot be performed. A lot of in a real real fight, you will you will not jump into a uh, a punch. You will not go deep. You will never go deep because you prioritize your protection first. But but in MMA or even boxing, people will go deep, way away because that is going to allow them to score a pawn uh, or a hit because the rules or the uh, the the organization the the whole. Um, methodology of the sport 
encourage people to do that. And they will not prioritize their safety anymore. And in this scenario, people will prior your training, you will prioritize footballs. You will not prioritize technique because techniques are there to protect you from getting killed. Their techniques isn't just one thing. I do this and there's one technique. Their techniques has like a lot of um, components. It's like a train. This happens because of this and then I do this and then, and then I do this. But in a MMA fight, you don't see a lot of this. It's just people jumping ahead, trying to hit, uh, trying to perform one thing and try to like get the most out of that one thing. It's because that scenario doesn't encourage you to, um, to have self-preservation or to either encourage you to just score upon regardless of your self-preservation or for whatever reason. So your training, your physical training will be different. In a real fight, you will prioritize the technique. You will prioritize getting uh, to be safe. In that sports scenario, you will prioritize like ramming your opponent. I agree. So yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's a very different concept. So go back, going back to using Kung Fu in sports or in contact sports. You can, if you are, you, you want to be an MMA fighter and you want to translate Kung Fu into an MMA scenario, you can. I believe there, I believe some people are trying to do it with very, uh, very level of success, but people are, I think people are doing it, but, uh, but it's not, it isn't that easy. Isn't that simple because MMA isn't started, like the foundation is different. You have to think differently in order to train for that MMA thing. Um, and MMA, if you look at an MMA fight, is basically kickboxing and wrestling. Different, different training. They train differently, and that they they just fold you into the ring and you combine, you do whatever you on your own. So what ha what happened is, <clears throat> in an MMA fight, some rest, some people like. People are uh, some. It happens all all across all across the world. Um, for everybody, some people are better at something, and because they are better at something, they will train better and and more at that certain thing. Now, some people are natural born wrestlers. Some people are natural born strikers. So when you train, when you train dif different discipline, even though you have some. Um, uh, training in other discipline, but you do not combine them organically. You do not train in the full system. What happened is that you will have wrestler in an MMA fight. You have strikers in an MMA fight. When that happens, based on the a few match that I've seen, the wrestler will stand uh, at a distance, and the striker will also stand at a distance, not doing anything. Because the striker will try to strike the guy and then the guy will just back away and look for opportunity to close in to wrestle. And the striker will try to prevent that by stepping away and not let the guy to close in for wrestles. And that is not martial arts. That is putting, that's, that scenario is putting different discipline or sport discipline into a, a ring. You are like throwing a a tiger and a lion together when they when in the wild in the in the in the real world in the wildlife they don't they wouldn't meet they wouldn't even meet and from from a martial perspective that makes no sense it is artificial if you do it this way you can put a lion and a and a, and a tiger in a ring but you have to understand that it's artificial okay, okay. so if you are if you are the organizer of the lion and tiger fight, and the lion and the tiger will have trainers, they will not, how do I put this? The objects will not, let, will not act naturally, will not train naturally for that fight. Is, is the trainer or the organizer trying to get, will, will, will have the trainer train the objects in a certain way to 
make the match more exciting so that they can gain uh, the most money on 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 tickets cost on tickets fees or on on the bookies martial art is still martial art has to be real based on real life based on real scenario so i, I agree <laughs> yeah yeah you can you can translate like because like i said there's there's overlap so how i am not i wouldn't be the person to translate this uh to translate martial art into mma because i don't think that's real real fight but if you want go for it but i would also advise going for it in a more holistic manner you don't just train for striking you don't just train techniques you have to understand the purpose first you have to understand the the way the fight works and then you have to build you have to use the elements of your chinese kung fu and and make a new dish so to speak so my my last questions that are like um how do you see kung fu in 100 years and what would be your like advice to people that are st starting kung fu now are people that already practice and want to uh, reach like a, another uh, high level? Uh, that would be difficult to say. I can say what I don't want to see. I don't know how it will it will morph in the, in the well, not even in the next decade, but probably maintain the same like uh, uh, stagnant. I think it's stagnating. Martial art, Chinese martial art right now is people because people are not thinking about improving. People are not breaking the narratives. People are not breaking out of their boxes. It will go downhill if you keep doing it this way. Uh, that said, it can be improved. You just need to spar. I definitely want to see people more people sparring. Uh, I think there are some um, are some uh, um, good uh, development in terms of like so-called uh, uh, CMA. But even though I don't like term, I don't like the uh, the expression of it. But people using like uh, wearing protective gear and then they start using um, weapons for sparring for 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 contact sparring and. Uh, I think that's that idea is good. I just don't like the expression of it. I just don't like the organization. The execution is problematic. I I think because it, like because that will morph into its own thing. Like sports, it becomes it's becoming a sport. Protective full gear sparring has its place if you are using it to understand the technique and skills but not turning it into a sport although once you host tournament it will ipso facto will be turned into a sport so i don't think we can um we i don't think we can discourage it or or to say this is not the way to go i think um we can try to improve it to to use it for your practice, just to don't think about tournament as, as, the, as the most important thing. Just uh, your practice is the most important thing. Um, that's that's one uh, idea. Um, in order for people to practice it, just focus on understanding it. Don't think about how cool it is. Don't think about uh, especially don't fall into the pit pitfall saying that Chinese martial art uh is the best or, or whatever it's just a martial arts if you are doing it right it will look at the highest level at the highest level it will look similar to other martial arts at the highest level because it's it's based on physics it's the same thing it is at the beginning and the, at the mid level that is you have all these uh, different expressions because people are not there yet 
but at the highest level, it should be very close. So do not think Chinese martial art is that different from European martial art, let's say like HEMA and Chinese showmanship and European showmanship. Do not for one second think that they are different because they are based on physics. They are based, they are both, if you are doing it right, they should be both based on real historical data. That means better with practice. Of, of course, there will be cultural and uh, training differences, but the principle will always be the same. And I see people arguing like, like, like in a HEMA discussion, people are saying, oh, HEMA use true time. And I see people from the uh, Chinese martial art background saying, oh, uh, Chinese martial art, we don't use true time. We, we, and then what are you gonna use? I mean, it's like one thing is, uh, it's like European showmanship, they are saying, oh, my footwork is based on gravity. And you come out here and say, oh, Chinese martial art, we don't, we don't care about gravity. It's, no, this doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. We might have a different expression because we have different expression because true time just means your body, your footwork, and your, your the point of a sword goes together. And in, Ch in Chinese showmanship, we do the same thing. If you don't do this, one thing is lagging behind you, you have a big opening. So that is to say a lot of people who have, uh, who are just scratching the surface of Chinese martial art and who just parrot what they have heard from their, either their friends or master or online, they are saying, they, they, are, they are the loudest voice at the moment and they misrepresent Chinese martial art and people just look at them funny. And, and I want people like, now, of course, I, when I say this, this is my opinion only, I don't represent uh, what I said isn't all correct. It will never be all correct. There will have, I will have also make mistakes, but have the understanding that you have to have the basic knowledge of what you are saying and you have to dig deeper and don't open your big mouth before you do that, before you dig deeper. That's one thing. Um, um, and to keep looking at history, because that's where the data is. Although we don't have the data anymore because people live in the past, died, but we have historical, historical treatises real historical shit is not your master. Your master is like, well, how, uh, your master, my master is only born in 1948. He's not a historical person. He didn't participate in historical battle. Uh, look at the context of history and how people understand certain things, but don't take it as truth. You have to understand the, the condition. You have to understand what people say. You have to understand Historical people have are uh, limited in their thinking because of their of their time. You have to understand the concept, what they say in modern concept in, in your in, in with uh, in your in modern science, in light of modern science. They may be correct. If they are correct, interpret what they say this way and express it in modern term in in your own language. So you can express it, you can explain it to modern people so that we can all understand, we are on this, all on the same page. People are not doing that right now. People are using historical, maybe may or may not, even may or may not be historical saying, but they just miscope. It's either miscope, misunderstanding, misinterpretation of their of historical um, text or their master and just, throw it out there and, and call this Chinese martial arts. And, and if you, if you look at it from a, if you try to look, try to understand what they, what these people say from a modern perspective, you just go, you will look at them weird because it's just parroting what people has been said before. There's no, there's no digestion. There's no your own, there's no critical thinking. There's no your own input in what you said. You understand what I mean? You just, you just copy and paste some uh, word salad 
and then you present it as as Chinese martial art. And if if enough people are doing this, and people from the outside will just look at this wet salad and say, "Wow, Chinese martial art is is so bad." And and yeah, the ecology is very bad right now. I think it's because people do not try to and they do not try to digest or understand the uh, the thing that they come across and be, just simply because their master says something and they automatically assume that it is the gospel it's not true at all my master said a lot of things i don't always agree with him yeah so to sum up i would say to sum up in in a very concise manner just make it a science. When you learn something, you it has to be scientific. When you apply it something, it is an art. Learn it scientifically, apply it with 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 uh, creativity, then you you make it become an art. Really, we have to do this. Yeah, really, really good this explanation. Um, so I would like to thank you about this a uh, great opportunity that you took the time to share your big knowledge of maintaining physical education fighting with us and right. we are so honored to have you here <laughs> no problem my pleasure so we will end for today so the guys that are watching um, please like, subscribe, and I will put in the um, description of the video uh, Sifu Shong contact of uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, so you can check his personal videos of Mantis. Um, he has his well, link to my link to my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. YouTube channel too. Yeah. There he puts sets, applications, and concepts, and many uh, good content. Right. All right. All right. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye-bye.